Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Captain Dan here. I am in Marco Island, Florida. Right behind me is a Prestige 520 flybridge that we are uh, going to do a sea trial and survey for, uh, for potential new buyers. Uh, we are under contract with this vessel and they are coming to, uh, to get it all inspected to make sure that the boat is uh, up to, uh, to their standards for, uh, for purchase. Thought to try to switch it up for you guys, show you something different, a little more on the sales side of things, uh, the process of uh, haul out, survey, uh, engine survey inspection, what these guys go through, given the, the, the green stamp or said that, hey, these are items that need to be addressed and whatnot. Uh, something a little different today. I'm actually not driving. I have a local captain uh, from Florida to come with us uh, so I can do a little more uh, FaceTiming with the clients, uh, videos and, uh, and walkthroughs, making sure all the, the systems are, are, are good to go. So we actually sold this boat brand new back in Chicago. It's come down to Marco Island uh, for the last two seasons and now we have a new buyer uh, potentially ready to, to purchase. So stick with us, you might learn some stuff new and uh, hopefully you have a good day. We get some views of the Gulf as we go out, the canals here in Marco. Uh, we do have some storms coming in today. Uh, up in the background there, we got some storms that might be rolling in pretty soon. So we're going to get underway soon. So uh, hopefully I don't uh, get uh, disconnected with videos, but let's let's get moving. All right, so we are underway. Leaving Marco Island, heading to Rose Marina, also in Marco on the opposite side of the island. We are doing, again, a sea trial and survey, engine survey and um, overall engine or overall vessel inspection of this Prestige 2019 520. So uh, stick with me here. We got the captain up there. It gives me, uh, Captain Dan, a break from uh, actually driving and I get to uh, kind of walk through this boat and make sure the owners know what is, uh, what is going on and how the boat is uh, reacting and uh, engine temps and data and all that jazz. So um, I will kind of show you the process as we go here. And uh, so in the beginning of an inspection, if there's an engine mechanical inspection, and if there is a, uh, just an overall survey, typically the surveyors like to go in the engine room first because it's cool. Engines haven't been running for hour plus. So they're in the engine room uh, before we depart the dock doing uh, checking oil levels, checking engine um, serial numbers, checking uh, all the stuff in there, bilge pumps, sea strainers, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do preventative maintenance wise, but and then also taking it to the next level, getting a little further, they can do engine oil samples and go all there. So we got uh, engines are running down here, we're underway. Engine surveyor is going to go in there and do a little bit of uh, tricks while running. Smart for him to bring the headphones because it does get pretty darn loud in there uh, as we're underway. We're not going to be ripping anytime soon. We'll get uh, the speed survey portion of it uh, after the fact, but uh, we're just coming out of uh, the channel here. And we're going down in there right now. We've got a full checklist of items to go through. And uh, again, I don't want to get in their way overly, uh, but I do want to give you guys a kind of a background insight into what happens during these surveys and uh, what they're looking for, what uh, you as a buyer, what uh, a buyer is looking for. Um, because again, we, you want to know what you're buying. You want to know that uh, it has been looked at and, uh, and given a stamp of uh, you know, quality. So, um, he's doing that, inside is our other survey going on and we're checking, again, does every button work, does every switch work, uh, functionality of ACs and uh, every other thing. So we have everything turned on, jacked up high, so we have, uh, we know that everything is working. We'll check uh, items like, does the TV come up and down, we'll go through all of that. Again, I'm just here to facilitate and uh, go through. These guys are independent surveyors who uh, are accredited with their, uh, you know, the industry standards. Uh, so they are doing their job. I'm just kind of here making sure things go properly with uh, uh, 
on and off the slip, organizing with the marina, making sure we're getting the lift out on schedule. There's a lot of working parts. We need to deal with the marina, local marina to wherever we're at to make sure the vessel is able to get lifted out uh, for survey. Uh, we'll have to take it out of the water, let it dry so the hull inspector can check and make sure that the, uh, there's no water in the hull, no blistering of the, of the hull, uh, no damage on the props. Uh, the engine surveyor then can check the drives, make sure the drive lubes look, uh, look good and everything. So it's, this is getting a full, full look through and we've got Captain Dan here, another Captain Dan, uh, working on uh, at the helm to get us. He's a local captain in Marco who knows the shoaling and all of the other areas and you can already see there's the shallow spots here and the way the tides are pooling. So um, it's a little bit easier for me to have a local pro to help us out today. I get to actually see the sights and sounds for us. Keep chipping away and uh, keep you updated. This is the value guys of having local knowledge. You can see how shallow it gets right here. You got a, your day markers over here. Get the sandbar clearly over there. So you've got a thin passageway to get through. And if you're not uh, following the proper route, you can find yourself uh, high and dry and that's not what you want to do, especially on a pre-survey, pre-purchase survey. Okay, so we're double checking RPMs at idle. All that, it's got notepad like crazy, doing everything that they need. Look at the water tide pooling past that. You can see how much current is rushing past that uh, day marker there. It's pretty wild. So, so Dan, tell us, I'm going to throw the camera on. Tell us a little bit about the, the shoaling and, and Big Marco and, and what, we, what we're looking at. Well, all of this shoaling has, since 2017, when we had Hurricane Irma, it came directly over this area. That down there is called uh, Cape Romano, as far as you can see. And then it came directly over the beach area of Marco Island. Uh, and the eye traveled directly over Big Marco Pass, where we're going to be going. So it created all of this shoaling. All of this sand was two to three miles offshore. And because it came from the south here, it pushed everything this way. So these channel markers have been moved substantially. Oh, so they actually then moved them to- Oh, to they indicate. had to. Got it. They had to. Caxambas Pass used to be farther to the south. And now they've moved everything to the north. Um, and then when we get to Marco Pass, eight miles from here, uh, you'll see there's a lot of shoaling where, where they've actually had to put up temporary channel markers because we've had a couple of tropical storms um, over the last couple of years that have moved even more sand around. Wow. This area is somewhat protected. Big Marco Pass is not, so it's extremely shallow in that area. Very interesting stuff. Everything's a sand bottom here, so it moves fairly easily with the wave action and wind. Sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, we're at the entrance to the Gulf of Mexico right here, and we're nine and a half feet of water. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yep. They're taking notes of voltage for generator, voltage on uh, engines and the loads that it's taking. So all that is being taken notes and data, pictures and all that. So they can report back to the owners of all the details that, uh, 
that they are going to. Sorry. No, you're good. So this screen here is the. That's why I'm getting there. So this screen, let me go back, is the ship control screen. So you go to ship control, hold up a picture of our vessel, and we're able to look at all details and, and work on any of this. So if I want to turn lights on or off uh, and dim them to a certain percentages, we can dim lights, we can turn lights on or off. You see them, the little light bars in the background turning on or off. So you can mess with any of this from your helm. So if you're underway, you're driving by yourself or whatever, we're going across the, the Gulf of Mexico, whatever we're doing, we don't have to leave the helm to handle a lot of these functionalities. We can, you know, so again, I said AC. We can turn AC on in certain rooms, how much, uh, how much power we can mess with our radio uh, here as well once it spools up. Uh, we can look at our batteries. Here's another one, Charlie, if you want to yeah. look at this. So when you go to batteries here, okay. we can click the bow thruster battery and look at voltage. Okay. Uh, your house batteries, voltage and amps. Then you've got your generator. Okay, and then the mains. And then your mains. We're 28, 6, 24. Let's see your bench, 28, 6, 24. And we're looking to see if they digitally match up the engine data screens. 23, 25. Close enough for government work. <laughs> and one tenth of a volt difference. There we go. Very cool. So all of that screen. Now you can again you can see your water levels, your tanks, uh, other data, your fluids, your fuel. We're at 80 some percent. So any of this is super neat to see and, and to be able to have it at your. And so right now here even the bilge pumps. So right now our bilges are all at on auto, and uh, we can turn them on if I decided. All right, if there's any water in there, we can get it out. We can turn it on, then we can turn it back to auto. Um, so really, really nice feature there, and uh, another nice feature, this is specifically with Prestige vessels and integrated with the Raymarine. So this here is Big Marco Pass. This is straight in front of us is Big Marco Pass, and to the left is Capri Pass. That's the entrance. Oh, that way, okay. Capri right. Pass there, Big Marco Pass here, got it. So, understanding of the markers is a big thing out here on the intercoastal and all the areas you're going to be. If you're not paying attention to the directions of the greens and the reds and everything else, you can get yourself in trouble. All right, we are now in this very narrow little entrance there and there. Not a lot of room to work, but we are pulling into Rose Marina. Now uh, the sling is already waiting for us. We are going to pull right in, and they will lift us up with the slings, and uh, we will get hauled out for the uh, bottom inspection and drive inspection and all of that. So stick with us. Here we go. Just taps. I'm not the only one taps in and out of gear real soft and smooth. That's all you got to do. Little baby steps. Here we go. Constantly moving. They got stuff going on. They're dropping a, a lift boat there for a, you know, kind of daily get in and out service. And the slings are ready here for us. So we're just pulling in right on the bow here. We just got to watch the corners. And we'll angle in nicely. Get into the slings. The forward slings will go right about a little bit forward of a midship. And the rear slings will go a little bit forward of our pods and get picked out of the water.
guide us in nice and easy. Here, yeah, Mark, go! Go! Yeah, they're marked good, right? You see them? That's right, yeah. So, all vessels have sling marks like this, so then they can see it'll either say the word sling or a picture like that, so then they know that spot, where am I pointing? There it is, will match where these slings will go. So it's in the structurally most sound part of the boat. So he's doing that over here. Getting okay, that go. sling ready to lift up. Right at our belly. There we go. Pick up. Come back here. Oh, you need to go in reverse. Yeah, just shoot the edge off. So the boat is now out of the water. It's been drying for a bit. Uh, once it's been dry, the surveyor is able to come underneath here and check for any blistering of the hull, any damage of the hull, any damage of the props. Uh, they kind of just go around here and looking at everything. Um, he's doing some knocking right now, listening for any soft spots, which would be an indication of water intrusion into the hull. He's reading temperatures, um, uh, moisture meter, lettuce. They say the weather forecasters were correct. Those are big rainstorms there. They're kind of coming all around us. And we're going to have a couple of storms out over the Gulf over here. So I uh, might get a little wet on the ride back, but uh, hopefully it blows over quickly. I'm good with that. That's Alright, it looks like we've fairly rode out the storm. Uh, most of the storm is blowing uh, away from us and we are now uh, going to be heading back that direction towards Marco, uh, the south side of Marco Island. The storm is rolling this way, so we're going to go through a little bit left of it here. The rest of the winds are coming this way. It's clearing up down there, so we're getting out of the channel here, and we're going to head that way down to the south side of the island. So it looks like we'll be in the clear there. We'll get to go back to the uh, to the dock, and we'll get uh, everything last little bits checked, oil samples taken, and uh, we are uh, we're finishing up here soon. Thing I noticed is if you look at this windshield, 
they've got a nice ceramic coat on this windshield so the water is just raining right down so your visibility even though it is raining is much improved really nice feature there all right so we're looking at data we're taking pictures of the data yeah, yeah, our, our PSI pressure levels. No, I'm old school, man. <laughs> I'm good. Got a little bit of a rainstorm, but again, look at the water just dripping off these windows. Super nice with that ceramic coating. Now that we're back at the dock, our generator is on and I just plugged the shore power in so we see the shore power is blue. So we're going to take the generator, I'm sorry, let's do this first. We're going to click on the AC, we're going to switch it from generator, which it's highlighted, we're going to switch it to shore power. So we just click the shore power button, it pops over, AC keeps kicking in, now we see the blue line is connected to the shore power plug. Same thing here, we're going to go to the, AC, the house power, we want it to go to the plug, Swap it over. Now both are going there, so we can go to the generator, hit stop, generator power's down, we're on shore power, generator's off, we are all good there. Now we can turn off engine batteries, generator battery's good, and now we finish closing up the boat, and we're finished and complete. All right, well, that took an unexpected turn. Florida weather for you. This was a uh, big storm that rolled through, high, high winds, and hail is supposed to be coming. So we got the boat uh, wrapped up, tied up, and we are gonna get out of Dodge before it gets any gnarlier. Um, thank you for following along. Hope you guys learned something. I will put links on the bottom for uh, the marine surveyors, the engine inspector, and the uh, local captain down in Marco that all helped us out for this trip. Great time. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Cheers, have a good day. All right, so back in Chicago, and sorry for the last little bit of, uh, of uh, chaos at the end of that video. Um, storm came in quick, and we wanted to make sure the vessel was, uh, was properly affixed, tied down, and, uh, and not losing cushions or anything like that. So that was the number one focus. Uh, so I thought I'd take a little video here just to kind of uh, walk back and kind of refresh on some of the stuff we talked about. Now, um, there were three uh, gentlemen that helped us out on this video. Um, there were multiple. There was uh, Charlie who was with Action Mobile Marine. He is out of the east coast of Florida, uh, Port St. Lucie area. Um, he was the engine inspector and uh, did the oil samples, went down in the bilge in the engine room while we were running to, uh, to, to verify everything else from there. So a uh, good guy to know, really helpful. Um, and um, the other surveyor with the hull inspection and uh, moisture meters and everything else that he was doing was, was Buck. He is with uh, Lake Effect Surveying and Buck was, uh, was another very helpful gentleman, gave us a lot of insight. Um, between speaking with Charlie and speaking with Buck, some of the things that they were saying, uh, when I explained the video, what we were doing for buyers who are looking to get a survey and looking to uh, do, you know, how do I know who I'm hiring? This is my first boat ever I'm buying. Uh, the one uh, piece of advice, the number one piece of advice that both of them gave was go with an accredited marine surveyor, whether it's an engine surveyor or a hull inspector, uh, an accredited. There are multiple associations in the industry that, um, that have accredited lists of people that are, um, have gone through the schooling and have gone through these steps to, uh, to become an accredited surveyor, uh, not just an associate surveyor. Not to say associate surveyors are bad, but uh, there, are, there is a, uh, an industry standard of which the accredited surveyors need to, to uh, adhere by. So uh, NAMS and SAMS are the two um, acronyms for these uh, the accredited, two of the bigger ones. Uh, Society of Accredited Marine Surveyors is SAMS, and NAMS is National Association of Marine Surveyors. So again, if you're gonna be looking for a new surveyor um, for whatever area you might be in, you can go on there's websites, you can pull up a list of everyone that's on there uh, accredited and potentially find one in your area. Um, 
and feel them out, see what they, uh, what they say, what's their processes, because every surveyor is going to have a little bit of uh, potentially different processes. Obviously, there are certain things that are um, standards that they check, but then there might be some things that uh, they say, you know, I like to key on this or I like to look into that. So, um, you know, do your due diligence before hiring uh, a, a surveyor or an inspector. But I, um, I was hoping the video gave some good insight a little bit more. Uh, I didn't want to get in their way while they were doing the work, but uh, at least you got to see some of the overviews of what they do, uh, the notes that they take, the videos and the pictures, because they, they re send back a report to the owners or the, to the potential buyers. Uh, of a you know, 30, 40 page report about these are all the things that we noticed, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and then the surveyor uh, and the, the buyer can, can speak to each other about what, uh, what they think you know, the, the overall condition of the vessel is and then the buyer can make their uh, well-rounded decisions going forward from there. Uh, lastly, Captain Dan down with uh, Mariner Services Inc. down in Naples, and he was uh, it was a great asset to have on the trip. He was able to uh, to get us through some of those tight little areas, uh, knows the tides, knows the uh, the current uh, shoaling in that area because it is constantly changing with tropical storms and, and with tides and everything else. So great, great guy to have, uh, very good to meet him as well. So uh, I'm gonna put all three of these uh, gentlemen's lists, uh, contact information down in, uh, in the description below. So if you have any questions or if you're in their areas and you'd like to, uh, to reach out to them for, uh, for assistance on your next vessel, um, that would be great. And uh, I'm sure they would appreciate it too, that, you know, again, they work independently. They're, they're, they don't work for us. They work for the people that hire them, the buyers. Uh, and uh, and they, they do their own independent surveys and, uh, and report back. So I thought it was pretty neat. Hopefully you guys got some good uh, feedback, some good insight as to, uh, to that little bit of a process. Um, and uh, I'll continue with trying to give you guys some of the insights into uh, to the other sides of things other than just driving the boats a little bit into the, the sales side and uh, the management side and the maintenance side. So I appreciate you sticking around. If you have questions, please hit them up in the comments. Uh, and also, again, if you have questions about any of these gentlemen who helped out, feel free to reach out to them or reach out to me and I can get you guys in contact. Thank you for being around. Cheers. See you on the next one.